Alrighty then, here we are back for round two with blue green LD, and this is a snap keep. So this this hand is exactly why I have Sylvan Rangers over like Elvish Visionary. Uh, while it's entirely possible that between the, in my next draw step of an, uh, an Elvish Visionary, we would draw a third land. If we didn't draw a third land, it'd be a disaster. So Sylvan Ranger here doing exactly what I needed to do. So this obviously implies some sort of Drake-y nonsense. Um, Drake usually doesn't have uh, non-actual counterspell counterspells. So I'm just going to snap off the LD spell there. Temporal Spring obviously not the actual best LD spell in the world, but it's obviously better on like Boilerworks type effects. But I think, so it's deciding what exactly I'm going to play here. So like between Temporal Spring, Coiling Oracle, or like Invoking Muldrifter. I feel like I probably can get away with holding onto this Muldrifter. And like I have enough like just back up LD spells so that if my opponent like has like a by boiler works or something I can still punish them for it although you know since this is best on boiler works okay uh, we failed to hit a land again so judging that I have like something to do with like once I hit six mana I'm just gonna evoke this to try and hit a land So opponent can obviously play something like Seagate Oracle next turn if they have another untapped land. Um, compulsive research not the the absolute worst either, since if they want to want value, they need to discard a land. And also, you know, they had enough. Uh, <laughs> they had all these boil works that they definitely don't want to play into my temporal springs. But this LD train is not stopping. Um, Sylvan Ranger doing quite a lot of hard work this game. As you can see, dealing three damage and feigned me a land so far. The number could is uh, could easily go higher still. Let's see. Since I expect they probably have a counter spell by now, I'll I'd rather get this like Acid Moss countered. Wow, he didn't have a counter spell yet. As I was about to say, I'd rather get the Acid Moss countered than like the Mole Chambler next turn. But it looks like things are going relatively well. One nice benefit about having these like value creatures instead of like a bunch of mana creatures is that you know you can just instantly give them a good kicking while you're uh you know blowing up your opponent's lands. They like were not actually sitting here doing nothing at all. Mole Chandler. Taste it. And we even get to pulse back this Mole Drifter soon. It's always a little bit demoralizing when you're the opponent and you're like opponent, uh, you know, you, you like reveal thermal cast with Coiling Oracle and they're just like, oh no, why? Why must this happen to me? All right, that makes sense. That's um, instantly why you lead with uh, thermal cast in this kind of specific scenario, but you lead with thermal cast. Uh, because he'd rather have Acid Moss Resolve. <laughs> so that was a huge beating on a Drake deck there. Uh, we get to bring in some Dispels. I honestly don't really like Hydroblasts in this matchup, since like it counters their Pyroblasts, but like we don't actually have lots of blue spells in our deck. I mean, we have some good ones, 
But like the spells basically do the same thing, but they also counter actual counter spells. Um, let's see, what else is not especially good against them? Everything else is fairly good. Like Penumbra Spider uh, isn't like the world's best. Um, but you need to like not die to Muldrifters and stuff somehow. Um, since we're... So like a lot of the Drake decks though, some of them will board in like Stone Rains, which make these a little bit of a liability. I mean the speed is appreciated. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is... Like board out one Utopia Sprawl and one Spider since I'm like hedging my bets because I don't know exactly what configuration my opponent is on post board. I mean I recognize their username so I probably could go and look up their deck list online but I mean that seems vaguely against the spirit <laughs> uh, of playing like sweet decks and leagues. Um, so this like hedges between whether they're on like Stone Rains or like some other strategy. Uh, like it is fairly nice if you're on a draw to have a Utopia Sprawl since you can, you know, sometimes LD them on turn two, but not all that often anyway. So this hand wasn't actually that good. Um, it is very land heavy, but it did at least have enough land drops that I can like make a play in turn three, make a play in turn four, and like hopefully I was going to draw into something other than, you know, a bunch of lands. Hmm. It's actually fairly close as to whether we're supposed to cast Temporal Spring here. Like, Temporal Spring would just get countered by, by basically everything. Uh, so if we wait a one turn, you could hopefully draw an island and then Temporal Spring plus Dispel back up. But since we don't actually have a second blue yet, I think we're fine if a Temporal Spring gets countered. I mean, it's honestly not that big a deal for it to resolve uh, from the opponent's perspective, I'm fairly sure. So, I do think they have a counter spell though. So, now that I'm not going to discard a hand size by doing this, uh, I'll play this bounce land and then next turn I can Acid Moss with Dispel back up. And since they have like triple blue, even though you obviously would rather put them off blue mana, we might as well try and kill their mountain. All right, result, nice. Um, so that gives us a bunch of uh, extra mana. So next turn we could dispel like Mole Chambler with Kicker plus dispel backup. We haven't really drawn any, you know, any real action in this game. <laughs> um, our hand was quite land heavy to begin with and the, the games go on quite long but hopefully uh, we can draw something pretty good this turn. If not though I'm sure Mole Chambler will be fine. Um, so I could obviously cast Mole Drifter it seems fairly good, but then if they just have a fifth untapped land and play Drake, then that's fairly bad for us. So I feel like going for the Mole Chambler here is a good shout. Uh, killing Lonely Sandbar, because if they do end up playing a Boiler Works and returning it to the hand, then obviously they can just cycle it. There's no real value to having additional islands in this matchup, I think. Like, they don't play Gush. Uh, at least the usual versions don't play Gush. Alright, um, so that's not ideal either. Um, I guess I'll attack, see if they want to like bolt this Mole Chambler or anything like that, since that would be better if they have like a Pyroblast or something, but I guess we'll just cast Mole Drifter. Um, I don't expect it will resolve even through Dispel Backup. Uh, and knowing about Pyroblast existing is perhaps a reason to play Maldrifter last turn. 
But I think I still think if they like have a fifth uh, untapped land here, then play like Drake into Muldrifter or Drake into Drake into Muldrifter. You know that's bad news for us. So. Hopefully that doesn't happen. All right. Hmm, self-assembler is not the worst in the world. Um, it helps us put some pressure on. Unfortunately, we're a little bit short on being able to play more, and I don't know what I did there. I don't know why I tapped his um, Sulphur Falls. Uh, no, Thornwood Falls, rather. Obviously, much better to leave up a bunch of blue mana to be more threatening. But, you know, with between Mold Chambler and the Self Assembler, we have a decent clock going on. Uh, I guess if the opponent just has it all, then you know, uh, we've we've lost. Like we didn't draw enough, L uh, didn't draw enough LD pressure to put them away. We do at least know that they have um, a counter spell in their hand. So that's bad. Hmm. I guess that's not the worst thing ever. So something's going to get counterspelled, and if they're hopefully they'll counterspell the self assembler. Oh well, I guess this is a. Uh... This is a time I wish I had the fourth self assembler. But I mean, 12 power should be relatively good most of the time, right? I guess this looks like they have the thing, the ghostly flicker. Oh, they're getting in for the value too. Got to play tight. Yeah, okay. So, yep, I'm not going to make them go through it still. And I think we're still relatively good the way we are. Uh, it didn't see any stone rains there. Uh, I did see some like high, um, blasts though. So I guess uh, being on the play here, I think I'm actually gonna bring in the, this Utopia Spall again, just to try and like get the jump on them before they can start drawing cards. Um. This hand's not great, but it's not horrible either. Uh, like we get to play turn three Temporal Spring into turn four Temporal Spring, uh, while like having quite a lot of mana, so it should be okay at least. Uh, <laughs> Utopia Sprawl not good with the one forest uh, Summit Growth Chamber hands, that is for sure. I guess uh, it's vaguely punishing. So I'll just put this back on top of their deck again. Uh, let's um, redo this turn. Okay, and I think I'll Utopia Sprawl here and Acid Moss. Seems to get a decent uh, Kickstarter on our mana. Although, you know, we've drawn a couple more lands again. Uh, I guess we already had this one, but we've drawn like a couple more forests and Thornwood Falls. Opponent doesn't seem... I mean, the opponent could be slow rolling a boiler works here. But they don't seem to have too much going on. So hopefully... Hopefully we'll draw some more action and just not more lands. Because more lands would be the, the worst. Cap size. Ooh. Well, let's see. Uh, 
so we have enough mana. We can like capsize with dispel backup if they have their own dispel. Um, I'm just gonna be lazy though and play that basic land out. And we won the match. All right, so that is basically pretty good draws there. Uh, opponent did not get off the didn't get their card drawing off the ground in games one and three. Uh, obviously, they did in game two though, so we lost. Uh, come back and join me for round three.